grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Welcome to Morning Prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music Ministries, Organist and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church of downtown Boca Raton, Florida. It's a pleasure to welcome everyone on this beautiful day here in Florida. If you would like to follow along, I'm on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. Once again, welcome to everyone. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Jubilate. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 129 found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 784, Psalm 129. <clears throat> Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, let Israel now say. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, but they have not prevailed against me. The plowmen plowed upon my back and made their furrows long. The Lord, the righteous one, has cut the cords of the wicked. Let, let them be put to shame and thrown back, all those who are enemies of Zion. Let them be like grass upon the hilltops which withers before it can be plucked. Who does not fill the hand of the reaper, nor the bosom of him who binds the sheaves, so that those who go by say not as much, the Lord prosper you. We wish you well in the name of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our 
Our first lesson today is taken from the book of Judges. Chapter 18, verses 16 through 31. While the 600 men of the Danites, armed with their weapons of war, stood by the entrance of the gate, the five men who had gone to spy out the land proceeded to enter and take the idol of cast metal, the ephod, and the teraphim. The priest was standing by the entrance of the gate with the 600 men armed with weapons of war. When the men went into Micah's house, and took the idol of cast metal, the ephod, and the teraphim, the priest said to them, What are you doing? They said to him, Keep quiet. Put your hand over your mouth and come with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for you to be a priest to the house of one person, or to be priest to a tribe and clan in Israel? Then the priest accepted the offer. He took the ephod, the teraphim, and the idol, and went along with the people. So they resumed their journey, putting the little ones, the livestock, and the goods in front of them. When they were some distance from the home of Micah, the men who were in the houses near Micah's house were called out, and they overtook the Danites. They shouted to the Danites, who turned around and said to Micah, What is the matter that you come with such a company? He replied, You take my gods that I made and the priests, and go away, and what have I left? How then can you ask me, What is the matter? And the Danites said to him, You had better not let your voice be heard among us, or else hot-tempered fellows will attack you, and you will lose your life and the lives of your household. Then the Danites went their way. When Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his home. The Danites, having taken what Micah had made and the priest who belonged to him, came to Laish, to a people quiet and unsuspecting, put them to the sword and burned down the city. There, were, there was no deliverer because it was far from Sidon and they had no dealings with Aram. It was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rahab. They rebuilt the city and lived in it. They named the city Dan after their ancestor, Dan, who was born to Israel. But the name of the city was formerly Laish. Then the Danites set up the idol for themselves, Jonathan, son of Gershom, son of Moses, and his sons were priests to the tribe of the Danites until the time the land went into captivity. So they maintained as their own Michael's idol that he had made as long as the house of God was at Shiloh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. 
Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here with, who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. the first song of Isaiah. <clears throat> Let us now meditate on the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now come to that time of offering our own prayers of thanksgivings and intercessions. We pray for all of those who are on our prayer list. We pray for all those who may be sick in the hospital, in a nursing home, or in a rehab center. We pray for all those who have lost a loved one. We pray for their families that they may find peace and healing. We pray for all those around the world and in this country who are suffering from COVID-19. We pray God's blessings be upon them and their families. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and the scientists who are working for new vaccines. We pray for all of our teachers and students and administrators who are starting back to school this week. We pray for their safety and for continued learning. We pray for an end to racism bigotry, homophobia, and hatred in all its manifestations against our fellow brothers and sisters. We pray that we will be better stewards of your creation and stop climate change.
We lift up all those around the world who do not have enough. Enough food, enough access to health care, enough peace, enough love, enough joy. And dear Lord, we pray for peace on earth. We pray for all those who live under the threat of war and for victims of war everywhere. We pray for the men and women who serve our country so bravely and so valiantly in our armed forces. We pray for our world and our nation and our leaders. May they make decisions out of love for all your people. And dear Lord, we lift up this church, St. Gregory's Episcopal Church. We pray for its staff, for its ministers, Father Sherman and his family, Father Thomas and his family. We pray that St. Gregory's will continue to be a beacon of light and hope here in South Florida and around the world. And now, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Blessings to everyone this morning. Welcome to morning prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music Ministries, Organist and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church in beautiful downtown Boca Raton, Florida. F from wherever you join me, I welcome you today, whether you're in Kentucky or Florida, England, or from around the world, welcome. I'm going to scroll down. I'm on St. Gregory's page right now and see if there are any requests this morning. I had a little bit of a snafu earlier. Um, I had the wrong reading pulled up, and uh, so I read the book of Judges instead of uh, what was listed as the book of Acts, so I apologize for that this morning. Um, so I'm just welcoming everybody this morning. Wonderful to have you with us, Patricia, Anne, Laura, Cassandra, Chris, Marsha, Donald, for all parents who have lost a child, yes, Cassandra, what a loss that is, and I can only imagine what that must be like. Laura, wonderful to have you with us. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be back here in Florida now. I was in Kentucky the last few weeks and it was such a privilege and honor to be with you from my parents' home and also from uh, my alma mater from a church back in the 1980s where I served as organist and director of music, First Christian Church. And it was a pleasure to be with um, Patrick Messer, who is their senior minister, and Betsy Grice, a dear friend of mine and a choir member there at the church. Um, it was wonderful to welcome them into the family of St. Gregory's morning prayer circle. So wherever you are, welcome. If you're looking for a church home, as Father Andrew likes to say, look no further, you found it. 
Whether you attend in person or online, we welcome you. This Sunday, we will be having a wonderful soloist, Aziz Safarov, cellist, who will be playing at the 10 o'clock service this week. 10 o'clock, and then at 8 o'clock, we have our early service. Um, it's just organ. And then at 10 o'clock, we have uh, congregational singing this week, along with cellist Aziz Saparov. So I hope you'll join us. The choir returns mid-September, so we're looking forward to that. And as things begin to ramp up, uh, I'm sure you'll want to check out the church's website for all the information for all of the uh, programs that are starting back up, Sunday school, online classes, uh, the Gospel of Thomas, all of these wonderful offerings uh, here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church. You will find something that uh, will interest you, I have no doubt. So, without further ado, let's see if anybody else clued in with a um, request this morning. I will uh, close this out with a piano meditation and a final blessing. Thank you so much for being with me. Blessings to everyone.
Once again, thank you so much for being with me this morning. I'll see you next week. Thank you. The prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is discord, harmony. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life.